We're continuing to look at our marketing plan. So in our previous videos, we looked at strategic planning. We develop our functional strategy. What are we going to, what are we trying to achieve when it comes to our customer relationships? And then in our last video, we started to look at the target market by fleshing out that ideal client. As we continue our look at our marketing plan before we dive into details in terms of product and pricing, we want to look a little bit more in terms of that target market by looking at competitive advantage. So ultimately we're gonna flesh out our four Ps, right? Product, what is it we are making, a good or a service? Who needs it? Why do they need it? We're going to look at price. What is the customer willing to pay? What are we, the business, willing to sell it for? What's the competition charging for their products? We'll look at place, where's the product available, where is it advertised, and then we'll look at promotion. How is it advertised? How are we communicating to the customer? Before we flesh out those four Ps in more detail though, we want to better understand our competitive advantage because that is going to inform what we do in terms of product, price, place, and promotion. So the four Ps themselves, um, come from an individual named uh, E. Jerome McCarthy, a marketing professor at Michigan State University. And the four Ps came from work that he did, further refining work based on Neil Borden. So Neil Borden was a business professor at Harvard University, and he coined the term marketing mix in the 1940s. So we talk about the four Ps, we're talking about our marketing mix, and that marketing mix is going to depend on uh, our competitive advantages that we are try, trying to achieve. So we need to look at what products, what goods and services will give us a competitive advantage. So we want to choose products that are based on our own experiences. So we have knowledge and expertise in that area. Maybe we want to focus on a product or service that's been overlooked. So maybe you've had an idea uh, about a product uh, because you find that it's just missing. Uh, out there in the market. So you have an idea that that would solve an issue or that isn't available or is a combination of something that's currently available, but it's unique and different. If you're going to create a new product, we wanna make sure that it is viable, right? So we validate the market first. We do a bit of a test uh, to see if there is demand for a particular product and its features. We use some marketing research to help figure out price and the specifications of that particular product. We wanna make sure that whatever we're creating as a product has value to our customer. So we go back to our discussion in previous videos about transformations. How are we adding value? So are we making something available where, other pe where the people are? Are we moving it? Are we changing people's um, Physical being, mental um, state, are we making something that our customers wouldn't want to make themselves because it takes too much expertise, too much time? What is the value added that we're offering? And we want to find ideas that will lead to, to more ideas, to more products or services, uh, something that will give us an opportunity to expand our product line. Uh, by offering multiple product items in the future. So creating opportunities for growth. And if we're going to create a new product, we wanna make sure we have sufficient capital uh, to launch our product or service. So as we're deciding on our four Ps and here with our discussion about our product, we need to look at what is our sustainable competitive advantage. So how are we adding value? And is it going to endure over time? So competitive advantages have a life cycle. We develop a competitive advantage, we deploy it, and then it declines. So if you think about the competitive strategy of cost leadership, so we're gonna find more efficient ways to produce our goods so that we can pass on lower prices to our customer. We deploy it, but then our competition copies and finds efficient ways as well. And so we're no longer different from the competition. Our competitive advantage starts to decline. If we differentiate our product, so we're going to offer unique features and our product does things that others don't. We develop it, we deploy it, others figure out what we're doing and then it's 
making us money, and then they copy it. So competitive advantages, it's challenging to sustain them. One of the biggest challenges to competitive advantage is keeping the competitive advantage. When it comes to competitive advantage, you could have cost leadership, so you're lowering costs, so you're lowering prices. Differentiation, we're unique, we're better quality, and so people are willing to pay more for it. We can have a first mover advantage, so we can be the first one to enter in particular into a particular market. So we're offering maybe a unique product to a unique group of people. So it is more of that niche or focus approach that we talked about before in terms of strategy. But if we're the first one to provide a product to a select group, we have that first mover advantage. Maybe uh, we're competing based on timeliness. So we're a pizza delivery place, 30 minutes or it's free. And so because we are able to get those pizzas out and in the hands of our customers quickly, we have more of a time-based a competitive advantage. Maybe we have access to technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, processes and, and automation that allows us to do things differently, do things more efficiently, do things in ways others can't. That creates a technological advantage. Now, as others adopt similar technologies, similar machines, then of course that competitive advantage will decline. We can also create a competitive advantage by partnering with another organization. So that's a strategic alliance. Maybe this will give us access to uh, customers in another region, another country. They have, our partner has the knowledge in terms of um, the cultural norms, the legal expectations, and so the partnership gives us an advantage moving our product in. Uh, so there we have the strategic alliance. So the partnership with another organization, their expertise uh, gives us the advantage over our competitors. So cost leadership, differentiation, first mover, time-based technology, and strategic alliances are all different types of competitive advantage. The challenge, of course, is sustaining that um, when others can copy what you do. So if we're looking at a sustainable competitive advantage, we can use the resource-based view to help us find competitive advantages that are more sustainable than others, okay? So the idea with the resource-based view and the procedure we're gonna call VRIO is that it's more feasible to exploit external opportunities. So going back to our SWOT, it's more feasible to take advantage of opportunities using existing resources rather than trying to acquire new skills for that opportunity. So we use what we have. So then we look at our resources. What do we have? Well, when we look at our resources, we have tangible resources and intangible resources. So tangible things you can touch. So that would be our equipment, our raw materials, Intangible things are things you can't touch. That's gonna to be our, our brand, our reputation, our trademarks. The knowledge we have in terms of how to make things, so our intellectual property. And if we're looking at the resources that will give us a sustainable competitive advantage, we need to look at resources that are heterogeneous and immobile, okay? So, Heterogeneous meaning different than others. So what do we have that's different than the competition? And what do we have that can't move to another company? So often companies wanna say, well, what gives us the competitive advantage is how great our employees are. They just love our customers. They're passionate about what we make and do, and they give us the competitive advantage. Well, according to the resource-based view and our VRIO analysis, it's not gonna be a sustainable competitive advantage. While they may be different and unique as our employees, the problem is, is they're mobile. If they're unhappy with us, they're gonna to go to the competition and now the competition has our competitive advantage. So as an organization, we want a sustainable competitive advantage. Using the resource-based view, we need to find resources that are intangible, that are different, and that can't leave the company. So the VRIO framework helps us identify these. 
So which resources are valuable? Okay, they help us increase the value added to the customer. Which resources are rare? Okay, other companies don't have that. Which resources are costly to imitate? So if another company sees us doing it or having it, they can't easily get it. Okay, and then what we need to do as an organization is say, okay, well, are we taking advantage of those resources and are we protecting those resources so they don't leave and so they really do give us a sustained competitive advantage? So let's think about De Beers. They make diamonds. So according to our research space view, tangible, intangible, well, if we look at it, diamonds, they're tangible. Okay, are they different than the competitors? Well, for the last hundred years, De Beers has been one of the only companies to own diamond mines, in which case they have access to resources that others don't have. And if we go through here, is it valuable? Okay, people are willing to pay for diamonds. Is it rare? Okay, well, we are the only one who has a diamond mine, so it's hard for the other companies to acquire this resource. Is it costly to imitate? Well, what we do see with De Beers is that in the last uh, decade or so, we found out that we can make our own diamonds, right? We can, we can compress carbon and create diamonds. We don't have to wait for the earth to do it over uh, hundreds of years. So that means that other companies could compete with us. Maybe that it makes us less rare, um, assuming customers see the two as the same. And then is it costly to imitate? Well, how hard is it to have man-made diamonds versus ones that. made by that. the earth? So if it's costly to make them artificially, then that helps us maintain and sustain that competitive advantage. So when I identify the valuable, the rare, and the costly to imitate, okay, what makes us unique? And then we want to know if our organization is organized to exploit these resources, take advantage of them to create that sustained com competitive advantage, and are we in the process as an organization to protect those resources so we continue to have that competitive advantage? So let's think about Tim Hortons. What is valuable in terms of our resources? Um, what adds value to our customers? All right, so um, when we have staff who are um, polite and nice, that adds value to our customers. Our customers want their coffee order and they want it quick and they want the food fresh. All right, so is that gonna be our sustained competitive advantage that we can give you coffee quick and that uh, we have um, fresh donuts. Well, is that rare? Well, other companies could make coffee. Other companies could make donuts. And so maybe the quality isn't something that's rare. Others can do that. Maybe it's more difficult for other companies to provide as fresh of coffee. Maybe we have a lot more customer base, so we are able to get through coffee more quickly. And so it's not a pot that's been sitting around for a while. The coffee goes, we have it out the door quite quick. And so it's constantly being turned over, which means for every customer it's fresh. That can be expensive for a small company that doesn't have the customer base. So it could be more costly to imitate. Okay. On the other hand, coffee itself doesn't cost a lot of money to make. Uh, so maybe even throwing out coffee um, and making new pots every couple minutes uh, isn't that difficult for our competitors. So what is it about Tim Hortons that is valuable, rare, and costly to imitate? So we could look, for example, at um, what else we know about Tim Hortons. Well, Tim Hortons has this national identity, right? People equate Tim Hortons as the Canadian brand. It's what it means to be Canadian, right? Okay, well, if we look back, tangible or intangible? Well, that brand identity is intangible. 
it is different. There's really no other food uh, brand that is seen as being so closely tied to the Canadian cultural identity. And then it's immobile, right? Another company can't just take it from Tim Hortons. There really is this reputation of this brand image that is tied to Tim Hortons. So it's valuable, it's rare, it's very costly to imitate. So if we look at Tim Hortons, the sustained competitive advantage is really not the donuts and, and it's not the timeliness, but it is that brand image. It's very hard to replicate by any other organization. It can't leave Tim Hortons. It's so tightly connected with them. It's something that could be utilized as an organization to help drive future growth as long as it is a resource that is protected. So if we look at um, our resource-based view, it needs to be something that, oh, where is that here? that we can protect and that we can exploit as an organization.